Hello dear gamers, it's your boy Alex and today's video is dedicated to those who are at the beginning of their Warframe journey or just overall lost in the depths of this game. If I could turn back time and offer myself some guidance when I first started, here's what I'd share. So here we have an account I made a while ago, but I haven't really played much on it. As you can see it's MR4 and I haven't purchased any platinum, meaning we will keep this 100% free to play. This account will serve well for simulating the experience a beginner would have. Literally first things first, put this setting off. Inline private messages. You can thank me later. This will save you so much headache. So the starter Warframe really doesn't matter since you can get all of them easily without much hustle. Just choose whatever looks the coolest to you. I chose Mag here since her one provides a really nice stack and you can consider her a nuke frame especially for the star chart. Now let's delve into the art of modding. Mods are the lifeblood of Warframe progression, and understanding how to use them effectively can significantly impact your gameplay. I will share the secret on how to mod any weapon in the entire game. We have different types of damage boosting. Base damage, multi-shot, critical chance, critical damage, element and faction damage. They all stack upon each other and significantly increase your damage done the more different types you have. But of course, there is status weapons that can't really be built for crit. With these, you will just ignore the crit factor and add more status chance or fire rate instead. You will recognize them when you see very low unmodded crit chance and damage. Good element combinations that you basically can't go wrong with are viral and corrosive, or pure heat or slash. So when in doubt, choose one of these. So all things considered, try to have as many damage multiplayer types and your weapon will do just splendidly. For the Warframe, since I am experienced, I just went with utility like move speed, loot and enemy radar, but honestly, just use what you have. Efficiency being valuable since you don't have many other sources of gaining energy and remember, it's better to slot 2 mods fully upgraded than 8 mods with 0 upgrades. I see this mistake all the time looking at new players making builds. Now let's talk about the best weapon for early game. It outperforms just about everything you could get at this point in the game. And you can get it once you hit MR4. So this. This weapon is just incredible. It's a glaive, meaning that it can be thrown by holding E and on the middle mouse click it explodes dealing massive damage. We are very gated by the mods and resources we have available and here you will see that my build is far from perfect but honestly it just destroys the star chart. On the void you will find enemies that are at the higher level end of the star chart but they are no match for Xoris. Everything is getting deleted off the screen with just one heavy attack. Only prerequisite to getting this weapon is completing the quest called the Deadlock Protocol. With the addition of the Viri Paradox, farming for Warframes has been made a lot easier. You can get all of the parts for a new frame each week just by running the circuit till level 10. The Warframes you should be looking for first are Korra, Necros or Hydroid. These Warframes are the best for farming resources and you will be needing a lot of those when you are starting out. Obviously, if you really like how some frame looks like or their kit, don't let me drag you down and pick as you wish. My secondary suggestion for a frame will be Mirage. You can acquire her by doing her quest hidden messages or by circuit. Mirage is the easiest nuke frame that requires the least effort with modding. Only thing you really need is explosive ledger domain. Then just put some efficiency, range and you are good to go. Surely you have seen like a million advertisers of clans and if you are not in one already, you are missing out a ton. Get over your social anxiety and find a clan you like and just write a message. Hey, I'd like to join your clan, smiley face. They will invite you and you will get access to a lot more stuff. Friends, the most important part of Warframe to be honest. Dragon keys so you can farm corrupted mods, awesome Warframes and weapons, energy pizzas, etc. This game is unplayable without a clan, I promise you. Next thing you should invest in should be a pet. The pet you will have at the beginning will either be a Kubro or a Taxon. The most important mod to have on your pet is Vacuum. This is just an incredible quality of life and I can't believe I didn't have it until I was like MR10 or something. You will save valuable time by not having to literally step on every resource to pick it up so you will speed up mission times immensely. Now it's time for some methods of making plot very early on. You can get to Void rather quickly and you should. The fastest path for this is through Phobos. It goes like Earth, Mars, Phobos, then Void, so it's very accessible. So I want you to get to Hepit. This is the best node for farming Lith Relics. It's a capture mission that can be done very fast once you learn the tile set a bit. Once you do that, ask for a taxi for this node here, Uko. This is also a capture mission that will give Meso and Neo Relics, which are the more valuable ones. If you don't know what taxi means in Warframe, it's basically that someone who already has the node unlocked will invite you to group and just start the mission. 
If you have at least unlocked the planet beforehand, you will be able to redo the mission and the node will be unlocked. So farm relics here, then do fissures. You might not have much unlocked, as you can see that I don't have either, but do what is available. Prefer doing exterminate, rescue, capture and sabotage. Once you gather a lot of stuff, the fastest way to make blood from it is actually to sell it as prime junk. Just find a reasonable buyer and sell them your duplicates. Like this you are selling 6 items at once, meaning that even if you are MR4 you will be able to sell 24 items a day, which is pretty good. You will be able to find buyers in the trading chat or even in Warframe Market website. I am warning you again though, find someone with reasonable prices, you can be the judge what those are. If you want to wait to sell full sets, you will make more platinum, but since we don't have a reliable source of getting Axie relics very early on, this will be a very painful and slow method. One very underrated method of making plot is with Aya. This resource has a chance to drop instead of a relic. And here is the prime resurgence tab, you can buy vaulted relics. The prices for these are a lot better than unvaulted relics and you should never sell these like prime junk. Rather sell them through Warframe Market or through chat. Here for comparison, the Frost Prime Blueprint you can get through Aya is worth about 30 plot and Revenant Prime Blueprint which is unvaulted is worth about 13. Resource boosters. I know 200 plot sounds scary to invest into, at the very least, make use of free boosters that you will get on daily logins. They might last just a couple hours, but make use of those couple hours. If you get a credit booster, farm some credits. If you get a resource booster, just get some resources for the weapons that you couldn't afford earlier. Even better if you already have a farming warframe, which will almost double already doubled resources from the booster. There is also other ways to get them, like Duviri, Barrow, or just through events. Just make sure to make most out of them. I'm also very aware of the endo situation beginners have because I am in one right now and yeah the weekly item hunt does help. This can be really frustrating from the difficulty for beginners but I have one tip for you. Just take it with a steady pace. If you just blindly rush through it you might miss a pressure plate or D path and fail. It is made that there is enough time. Syndicates. Don't ignore them. There is plenty of stuff that you will need from here such as augments, weapons and cosmetics. I remember when I was starting even my high MR friends MR15 at the time, <clears throat> were like, yeah, it's whatever those syndicates, because they didn't know any better. If you don't have enough resources for a rank up and you are at max capacity, don't waste that. Buy a relic pack or something until you get the desired resource. If something is really confusing, just check the wiki. It's the best source for Warframe knowledge. Something that made me really anxious in the game was that I was afraid to sell a weapon not knowing if I will need it later to make another weapon. Well, fear no more. In the description I have added a link that shows all of the weapons that you will need for later. But before you sell your Mutalis Cernos, since it's already built from Cernos, without realizing that it actually builds Proboscis Cernos, you will know that beforehand, thanks to Warframe Wiki. And also, why in the hell does Ak Bolto and Dual Scana make Akyajara? D, what are you smoking? It's fine. I'm fine. Quests. Honestly, most of the quests in Warframe are very fun. Maybe I'm being biased, but I have enjoyed them a lot more than in most other games. So do them. The more you do, the more new areas and possibilities you will discover. Especially with the addition of Duviri Paradox, you 100% don't want to miss out on this one. It opens up a whole new open world to explore and additional fighting mechanics. And finally, Mastery Rank, should you care about it or not? Everything will be unlocked to you at MR16. All weapons, Warframes, Rivens. So there is not really a reason to go further? Well, yes and no. Going further does give more standing, more trades, better login rewards and more so it's completely up to you how you want to view it. From my personal experience I had quit the game a couple of years ago since when I asked people what the point was in Warframe they told me to just get higher MR. So I was totally exhausted just doing Helena 24-7 then farming the mats to make new weapons and pretty much had zero fun. Thinking that's all there is to Warframe I just quit the game. But once I came back from my long break, I've had the time of my life. I was doing what I wanted and didn't care about MR. I found so many interesting things that you can do in this game. And funnily enough, I got to Legend 2 by not caring about it. Okay, that's a bit of a lie. I did grind from MR28 to MR30 since then you get to bless, but the rest of it came naturally. And blessings are very useful. I always remember the struggles and how much I would appreciate a blessing back in the day, so I sometimes randomly bless relays just to help people out. So my take on this is, don't know life getting higher mastery rank, rather just let it come steadily, you will have a lot more fun and not burn out. And my last tip for today, just enjoy the game. I sometimes wish for those moments back, moments where I was struggling to kill starshot enemies. I was running around with my MK1 Braton, 
burning through my magazines and it would take effort to kill normal enemies. Nowadays I can just slot an AoE weapon and explode a whole room on steel path with just one press of a button. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy being able to destroy enemies just by looking at them, but I'm very sure all veterans cherish the beginning, the start of their adventure as this is the thing that everyone went through and that's what all of us Warframe players share with each other. The more you do in this game, the more options you have on the plateau and the more fun you will have. Warframe community is by far one of the best and they are always willing to help, so find some friends. At the end of the day, all you need to do is look at your loadouts, just look how far you've come and be happy with all the memories you made along the way. That's gonna be it for today friends, be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you out there destroying the star chart and later on the steel path. My channel is filled with builds and guides that will help you on this adventure so be sure to check them out if you want to see more. I will catch you in the next one.